try to start government lawsuits threatening $10,000 fines and getting $700 fines if you go, hey, lady, we cut men's hair. That's clearly not discrimination. It's what you do as a business. It's how they operate. Oh, man, there's just so much going on right now. There's so much happening. And it makes my head spin. It absolutely makes my head hurt hard. Hurt so hard. Hurt so hard. Just to see videos like I have in my film, 9-11, The Road to Tyranny, that I made 14 years ago, 13 years ago plus. It was out within three months of 9-11. And they pull a lady over. It's a checkpoint in the middle of nowhere in Virginia. She's a naval veteran, no criminal record, has canning equipment, a VHS tape of Patriot Games in, the, in her back seat. You know, Harrison Ford, the Pachinik book with uh, Clancy. And they pull... Her over, she comes to the checkpoint. They want to ask her questions. She says, you don't have a reason to have a checkpoint running. Are you looking for somebody in particular? And they go, no. She goes, then I'm not going to do it. So they drag her out of the car, and they find the Patriot games, and they start freaking out and getting scared. It just says the word Patriot. And it's like a satire piece. You can't believe they're acting this silly, this freaked out, this crazy. And then they flip out from there and get in, the, in, her, in her trunk, and they find canning supplies they think that's really evil. And then they find a pocket constitution. And they go, oh, my God, uh, is this legal? And, and, and then a supervisor comes and says, she may be allowed to have that. Maybe that's what she talks about, how she's got a constitution. That may be what she means. Uh, but look, we'll just take her to jail and find out, uh, just is it legal? I don't know. Here are guys that have sworn an oath to protect and defend the Constitution, Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence. It's the whole foundation of the country. And I'm not making fun of them. That's how they were talking on the squad car video. I aired on the radio like all 20 minutes of it. In the film, there's like three or four minutes of it. And they're just like, my God. Oh, boss, she got it. I found one of them. She's one of them extremists like the Klan or something. Boss, she got one. And he's like, good Lord, I can't believe it. She's got a constitution. I mean, it was like they found a dead, mummified baby in her trunk. But when they do find live babies being vivisected on TV, nobody cares. It's like, oh, big deal. Cut up them babies. The government loves you. Planned Parenthood loves you. Everything's fine. Everything's great. It's sick. It's beyond whacked out. The most extreme level I have ever seen in my life. And it's only going to get crazier under the cult-like rule of these totalitarians that say our kids belong to them. They're going to forcefully inject us. I mean, they're really pushing into physical confrontation, licking their lips, because they hate the cops. They hate the vets. They hate anybody that's the old tradition. That's how cultic this takeover is. So they're going to use all the cops and all the military in a huge, stinking, cold war against the people, destroying their two enemies. And if you look at how dumb those Virginia state troopers were, I mean, oh, geez, God, oh, and you're watching the video, they could not be this dumb. They are. They're as dumb as Mark Dice people he goes out and talks to that go, I want to put, we want to put all gun owners in forced labor camps because they own guns. Yeah, it's time to arrest them all. I agree. Forced labor camps. It's, I'm sick of these people. <laughs> look, she's got a constitution. Sir, look, I found it. They act like the moron villains uh, in Time Bandits or something that live in hell. Master. I mean, they are so dumb. And I'm, most cops aren't that dumb. But it doesn't matter. They're recruiting the biggest idiots on the planet that are just so stupid they're invincible.
You can't intellectually reach out to them. You can't explain their own constitution to them. They think it's a demon. They think they find a, a rattlesnake in the back of her trunk. We can't be doing wrong running a checkpoint. It's routine. We use the word routine. It's a routine forced inoculation. It's a routine Jocelyn Elders. Uh, Surgeon General wants to teach five-year-olds how to masturbate. It, to have a creepy woman in a, in, a, in a naval outfit on TV telling teachers to reach down and help kids masturbate. There's nothing wrong there. There's nothing wrong telling five-year-olds that they've now got a bathroom if they want to be a girl or a boy. Or There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong in having U.S. Army soldiers march in red high heels to teach them how to, how, to, how to be feminist. I mean, what in the world? It's all just how much can they make us do? How many orders can they give us? What won't we not do when we're ordered to do it? We're going to go to break and come back and go to your phone calls and more here today. And I'll see if Pat showed up at the studio. He wasn't here earlier. He's here to tell his whole story briefly, and then we'll go to your phone calls. Uh, briefly, I didn't even plug last hour. I was so busy arguing with Ventura. But before I do go any further, um, if you want Super Mel Vitality, we've got it back in stock. Very, very high quality. Uh, we've got Silver Bullet. We've got all these other great products. The, the, the bad news is Deep Cleanse will sell out today. Also, Survival Shield Nason Iodine X2 will sell out in the next week at current sales projections. We're trying to get more in, but it could be as much as two months till we get more Survival Shield Nason Iodine X2, the total game changer, the good halogen, the amazing things and stuff for me and my family are just incredible. And at the end of the week, we've got to stop offering it at the lowest price ever from my Patriot Supply at InfoWarsStore.com. When you get InfoWars Select, their highest quality, newest, freshest, best meals, the best deal out there, InfoWars store.com or infowarsselect.com or 888-253-3139 now is the time to get storable food the elite are stockpiling it i hope we don't have to use it but you got to be prepared in these crazy times remember five years ago they told you it'd be 2025 till driverless cars hit major roads in towns across the world well now driverless pods are already hitting public roads that's right, ladies and gentlemen, and sex reassessment is latest company benefit in push for equality as they add the chemicals of the food and water to further confuse the public sexuality, moving us towards an asexual system where, you know what, there can be no sexualism, there can be no culture of any type, everything's just gray, or you're offending someone else who would have ever thought, that's from Bloomberg Business, that they would actually now be saying ban the word mother and father, husband and wife, boy and girl. You see, it moves from accept everyone to you can't be a man or a woman. That hurts somebody else's feelings. <laughs> it's not tolerance. It's not like I'm tolerant of the you know LD leather daddy on uh, South Park. <laughs> it's that. It's that. In the future, that'll be banned, too, because it's hurtful of someone who doesn't know Lemmy Winks. I mean, this <laughs> is the... That's my buddy, Pat, sir. I'm starting to joke around. I got to stop oh, right there, bro. Uh, Pat and his wife are really good friends of mine. <coughs> we uh, go out and it's Barton Springs, you know, go out uh, on the lake, you name it. Good friends of mine. He's also my personal trainer. Uh, you see the terrible job he's been doing. He's been gone for three and a half weeks, every few years. Uh, Pat takes off for a few days, uh, for a few weeks, and he's going to be telling you about his experience in Eastern Europe uh, with the immigrants. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not the word I'm supposed to use now. The migrants, uh, the the refugees. So we'll be talking to Pat here in just a moment. Again, more of the news uh, breaking on Infowars.com. Uh, there is quite a bit of it right up there that's very important. Uh, Russian Marines are battling ISIS now officially in Syria. That is red-linked by Kit Daniels up on Infowars.com. Uh, we also, uh, again... Uh, have Obama supporters signing a petition to nuke North Korea. Uh, that is linked up on DrudgeReport.com on the left-hand side as well. Now, Pat Riley joins us in studio because this morning um, I was working out with him and he started talking about what he saw with the refugees. And, and I said, you know, you sent me a lot of great photos, uh, 
text me a lot of great photos. I'm certainly envious of Croatia, certainly envious uh, of how beautiful Turkey is. I've seen footage before when we sent a film crew to Turkey uh, to cover Bilderberg of what it looks like there. I mean, it looks like looks like Tantooine, you know, meets uh, East Texas, meets Canada. I mean, just the weird way the different landscapes come together, wild stuff. But that's not, unfortunately, while you're here with us, Pat, uh, Repeat to the viewers and listeners out there what you experienced on your trip, what you saw, what the locals in Turkey said, uh, because we have footage we can show in the background while you're talking of the news media saying a father and his children were going to commit suicide on the tracks. They were all so upset that they couldn't be let into Hungary. Right. Well, it turns out he was throwing them onto the tracks or their baby will drown and then they position it for the news cameras. Who knows what really happened? I mean, this is professional-level guilt-tripping that's going on when the Middle East isn't taking any of these refugees. Saudi Arabia started all these wars, all these invasions. They've not taken one single person. They've got trillions and trillions of dollars. They buy everybody, basically, that dropped bombs on Yemen gets a $300,000 new Bentley. You know, why don't they give $300,000 Bentleys to the immigrants? We're sick of being told we've got to pay for it all. So thanks for coming in uh, to repeat the amazing story where you saw someone faking suicide if they didn't get more money and it was totally rigged. And then you talked to locals that confirmed that. So, Pat Riley, uh, please tell us what you saw. Well, uh, I had a chance to go to Italy, Montenegro, Croatia, and Turkey. And uh, while in Turkey in Istanbul, um, we were walking around Taksim Square, and uh, after dinner, we were just around the square thinking about a second dinner, and uh, all of a sudden some commotion broke out, and um, everybody was surrounding the Taksim Square Hotel right there on the edge of the square, and uh, all of a sudden things started getting thrown out from the window, and the, uh, the windows opened slightly, and uh, we noticed that half of the chair was hanging out, and there was a gentleman with like a white shirt with uh, his back um, to the window sitting down, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, everybody started screaming, don't jump, don't jump. And uh, there was a, um, a, a Syrian refugee woman with her kids sitting there. And um, he, she kept saying, we need money. This is this is a translation I heard. This is, uh, you know, this is what we've been pushed to do. Um, you know, my husband's going to jump. It's we need money to get us, you know, further to Germany, um, further into Europe. And uh, people just started shelling out money left and right. Um, but long story short, he didn't jump. Uh, it, it maybe happened between 12 and 15 minutes before, um, I guess, he allowed some people in the room. But uh, he completely broke through the glass, um, and uh, several times it looked like he was going to uh, go ahead and jump. Now, when you described the story to me in a morning, you said he had his chair back up against it, ramming through the glass, leaning back, saying, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And then she was down below. Screaming and crying. Positioned. To then give me money, give me money to folks on the street during all this emotion and that you were told by the local Turks. Well, repeat all that stuff you told me. Right. So essentially, um, you know, that was the night of the 16th, I believe, in September. Um, I previously that day, as well as the following day, was uh, trying to negotiate a purchase of a carpet and uh, had a discussion with the uh, owner of the company. Why um, wasn't it just free? You, you, you'd you migrated there from Texas. Why did they just give you a carpet well, they for free? They owed it to me. Yeah. So, or they're racist. Uh, probably a little bit of that, too. But, uh, you know, it was sad. He said, uh, essentially, this happens two to three times a week. There's always these uh, suicide attempts, and it's just a ploy. And he goes, did you ever ask yourself, um, essentially, how they were able to afford that hotel? You know, myself, I was spending the night in a uh, cheap dormitory hostel. Uh, you know, it was around 12, 13 euros a night. Uh, this hotel probably was at least 200 American, 150 to 200 American. Nobody ever questioned, you know, essentially how he was in the room, if that, in fact, was even you know, the, the husband, but uh, she kept screaming, my husband, my husband. Um, so, you know, he, he said essentially this happens all the time. And, and her just, children were with her, correct? Correct, and she was using them as a... That's a great... Well, that's what the gypsies do in Europe. And when you got to see it to believe it, they'll take their firstborn or whatever and maim it. Absolutely. Uh, break the arm, twist it, burn it with acid, and then the child sits there going, Ugh, begging, and then you're supposed to give them money. And, and it's, it's like, well, it's their culture to maim their children. And, it, well, I guess it was the Nazis' culture to kill everybody then. You know, I don't support any of that. No, we have to learn to discriminate against cultures that are twisted and corrupt. I mean, it's just a fact. Yep. It's wrong to torture your children, and it's wrong in Afghanistan to rape children. But here it is in the New York Times, U.S. soldiers told to ignore sexual abuse of boys by Afghan allies. Soon, it's going to be, I am a pedophile-phobe. Well, I am a pedophile-phobe. Keep your damn hands off the kids.
Well, Sorry, Pat, go ahead. No, well, the, well, the sad thing was he, he was telling me essentially, you know, there's a number of jobs that they could have, you know, uh, behind the scenes type of deal, you know, 